What's up, soldiers? Your boy Chris, Vibes it up in the kitchen. Quick video. My five, can you see five there? Usually only four fingers that show up in the video. Um, five tips for the perfect Jamaican style rice and peas or peas and rice, whatever you want to call it. Don't mind those. Watch them. You see that? They're trying to teeth a view in my video. But anyways, five tips. The best jerk. Rice and peas you'll ever make and jerk now lad. There we go so Tip number one I have here the pot I'll be using and I'm gonna go in with some vegetable oil You can use olive oil whatever type of oil you like using but I like to start off with my flavor ingredients so in goes my onion and I have it on a low heat because the whole idea here is to start that flavor nice and slow a couple cloves of garlic a whole bunch of scallions or green onions, spring onions, however you call it. And the whole idea here is we want all that flavor to start off with the flavor. And I've got here one of my favorite ingredients of all time. Thyme. Fresh thyme. Look at that. Um, I'm going to leave it with the stems and everything. Later on we can fish that out, but that's going to have a lot of flavor. Here's the thing, guys. I like my rice and peas to have a lot of kick to it. That is totally optional. Most people will put that scotch bonnet pepper in their hole and then they will fish it out after so you get a lot of flavor from the oils and the skin and not the raw heat. I like that heat so that is why I'm going in with it cut up like that. A good dose of fresh ground black pepper and I've got some allspice or pimento berries. Just gonna go in with a few of those. That's just to wake things up, low heat, and let that go for a few minutes. Tip number two. Now, out of convenience, I know we are quick to reach for the stuff in the can, and that is cool. But I much prefer using fresh red beans or kidney beans, whatever beans you like using in your rice and peas. I know it's rice and peas, but we use beans. Soak it overnight, if you at least a couple hours if you can. I like using the dry stuff. So what I usually do, I pick through it, make sure you go through it to make sure there's no stones or debris or anything like that. Soak it for a couple hours overnight is best. The same water, wash it, then the same water that you soak it in, all of that is going to go into the pot. So tip number two, try to use dried beans, not the canned stuff. The canned stuff is laden in sodium and preservatives. You really don't want that going into your body. With my kitchen smelling wicked, everything is nice and soft there. Those ingredients have really awakened up. I'm just going to turn my heat up now to medium high because we're going to go in with the beans that we just talked about. Give that a quick stir we want to bring that up to a boil now here is my tip number three at this point I like going in with my coconut milk as well and my tip number three is this use freshly made coconut milk if you can I know a lot of you cannot get access to the coconut milk so out of convenience we tend to reach for the canned stuff but if you have I mean, I say if you go over to my food FAQ channel, it is very easy to make coconut milk. Tip number three, freshly made coconut milk will give you a much better rice and peas. It's just starting to come to a bubble. So what I will do is I will reduce the heat, salt it accordingly, and then um, reduce the heat, put the lid on there and let that go until the beans are nice and tender before we wash our rice and put the rice in there. It will take about an hour or so, but patience is a virtue, you know? My beans should be nice and tender now. I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. So we're on to tip number four now. Tip number four is a combination of two things. First one being no matter what type of rice that you're using, I'm using long green brown rice parboiled. It is important that you wash that rice. Yes, wash that rice so you're going to rinse it until the water runs clear. Now the reason why you're doing that, it will help, well first of all to get rid of all that grit and it will help this rice that when it's cooked it won't clump together, it won't be gritty and it won't be starchy. 
and the second tip I'm gonna put some more liquid in here to to cook that rice the second part of that tip of tip number four is once this comes up to a boil remember to salt this accordingly once it comes up to a boil leave it stir it and leave it alone put the lid on there and leave it alone allow it to do its thing so that is tip number four wash it if you're using white rice if you're using brown rice whatever rice you're using wash it and once it comes to a boil leave cover it and leave it alone just want to quickly show you guys something but this is leading into step five and i said to leave that alone right so what i've done now i've i took the flame off it is completely off but this is uh, sort of a clay pot that I'm cooking this rice and peas in so it's still retaining some of that heat take the heat off put the lid back on there and let that sit for a good 15 minutes next step and that is tip number five we're gonna take a fork and we're gonna flake that rice to get it nice and shelly so basically tip number five for the ultimate Jamaican rice and peas get a fork it's been done now for about 15, 10, 15 minutes. You're just gonna take a fork and you're just gonna fluff that up. And it's just gonna, as my mom would say, it would yield the rice nice, or the Jamaicans would say, make the rice nice and shelly. Remember now, this is when you're gonna remove those stems from the um, thyme. If you had done the other route and floated that scotch bonnet pepper in here, this is when you would remove it. The Pimento berries that we started off with you can remove those at the same time as well Nobody wants to get that in their Rice and peas Chris here Caribbean pod.com my five tips for the ultimate Jamaican rice and peas or peas and rice enjoy <laughs>